Exciting times. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Yep, the fifth generation of Samsung's fabulous phablet with a pen, but big changes in store. Notice it looks an awful lot like the Samsung Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge because, well, Samsung has gone with the new high design here. But some of you are going to be disappointed. No removable battery, no SD card slot, and gone is the IR blaster, which I don't think was the most useful feature anyway on the note but still so aesthetically a big win functionally um, most of the two things are an f but everything else about this is a winner and i have a feeling that some of you who are naysayers once you get a look at this in the store you get your hands on it, you're going to want one and we're going to look at it now one of these phones is not like the other obvious, isn't it? This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 3, which looks much like the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, except for the Note 4 got, well, a classier kind of more like aluminum rather than faux chrome on the edges. This here is a pile of latest generation galaxies. All of them happen to be in black, obviously, which really has a blue tint that I think is rather, well, fetching. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Notice how it doesn't look super giganticus anymore next to the other notes. This is the Galaxy S6. And this is the Galaxy S6 Edge, not the S6 Edge Plus that we'll also be reviewing. Now, if we take the note out of the equation, the old note here, and focus on these guys, you can see the design similarities. Now the curve of the, the edge is something that the Note 5 inherits only on the back side, and that's what makes it easier to hold onto. The curves feel nicer in your hand. To bring the older note back, you can also see that it's gotten narrower. Most folks, if they're going to have a problem, it's going to be with the width of the phone because, well, our palms are only so wide. So good improvement there. Obviously, no reduction in the height going on over here. And for our standard Samsung Galaxy S6, well, we have the flat on all sides kind of design look, but very much part and parcel of the same new Samsung look. Samsung got tired of us reviewers and a lot of customers saying, man, I love your phones. I love everything about them, except for the fact they look so cheesy, faux, plasticky, all that sort of thing. So what we have here is a total new redesign. It's a stunning looking phone. You see it in person, you're just going to want it. I mean, it's the same as with the Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge. Honestly, they are they are certainly gorgeous looking phones. This is glass, this is metal. It's premium product all the way. Now, a lot of you are gonna be disappointed about a couple of missing features. One is the removable battery. The other is the micro SD card slot. I do feel your pain there, especially for me with the micro SD card slot. When today's big games can take three or four gigs of storage a piece and you've got this nice camera with 4K video recording, it's not impossible to fill it up and your only storage options are 32 or 64 gigs here. So if that's really a showstopper for you, this is not the video to watch, sadly, for, for you Note 5 fans who don't want to give that up. I think a lot of people are going to say, well, the battery life is pretty good. I can live without the removable battery that we had in the old model where you pulled off this faux plastic back and you had access to the battery over here along with the SD card. As for the IR blaster that we used to have on the Galaxy Note 4 and previous versions, that's gone too. So for those of you who really like controlling your AV home theater gear with that, that's the other feature that's gone. Inside you have the same hardware as the Galaxy S6 and that is actually still a fine thing with us. 2.1 gigahertz Exynos 7420 octa-core. That's a 64-bit CPU. We have Mali T760 graphics, UAF, UFS 2.0 flash storage for fast storage, and even more impressively, we're up to 4 gigs of RAM. 64 bit CPUs can address 4 gigs of RAM. So is here, and that means even better multitasking. Did you see me almost drop it? I love just about everything about this phone. Two things I don't like are the fact that it is slippery because, well, glass is a slippery thing. The curves that feel so good in the palm of the hand like this, well, it leads to dropsies. And the other thing is how nasty this gets with fingerprints quickly. Let's look at the back now because you're not going to say it looked this pretty again in this video again. It will get grimier and grimier and I do not have particularly sweaty paws either. Oh well that's what cases are for I guess, huh? Uh, the other thing that Samsung has done is a spring-loaded S Pen this time. Now I, th I think that's kind of nice. No more futzing and picking if you don't have fingernails. It's not easy to get it out. Uh, but the bad thing is it's pretty stiff spring. So given how slippery this phone is and the amount of pressure that you're using, you might actually just shoot the phone out of your hand if you do have, well, sweaty hands. 
not the end of the world. By the way, this pen is still a Wacom pen technology pen here. It, the look changes a little bit every generation. It looks like metal, but it's still plastic. We have a single button for doing stuff right there. Still an excellent pen with pen pressure sensitivity, so you can get variable line widths on it. Also has palm rejection, so you can rest your hand on the screen with a 5.7 inch QHD 2560 by 1440 display. Believe me, you probably will be resting your hand on the screen once in a while. Now this is a smartphone, so it's smart enough to know when you've taken the pen out. We've seen that feature before. So you get the pop-up. You have things that you can do right here. A screen capture. You've got smart selection. You've got action memo for quick memo. you go got S-Note for full memo. And you can customize it and add shortcuts of your own. So nice and tidy and clean. And you can hit that to hide it away over here. Well done. And we'll, we'll check out the S Pen a little bit more but first, let's talk about some other features. Multitasking is still here. Multi-window view. You've got the smart stay where it uses the front camera to see if you're looking at the screen. It doesn't turn it off. Just about everything that you want. The gestures. If the phone is ringing, you turn it face down. It can mute it. All that good stuff is still here. No software features have gone away. This is running Samsung TouchWiz, and it's, it's the new improved lighter version of TouchWiz like we saw in the Galaxy S6. So, I haven't been a big fan of TouchWiz, but this is pretty fine. It's not too, too heavyweight, and it doesn't slow the phone down. And we have Android Lollipop 5.1 on here, so we're running the latest and greatest. Now, you notice these funny little floating icons over here? That looks a lot like the gallery icon. That looks a lot like Chrome. That is part of the multitasking. So you can have a window, and this is our website here, the mobilized version of it. You can drag this around using the pen or using your finger, put it wherever you want. You can resize this window. And if you want to make it temporarily smaller so you can see things, well, you can turn it into one of those teeny little icons. Or you can bring them up half and half screen if you want to drag content from one window into the other. And as usual, not every application supports multi-window, but the ones that do have the little hamburger symbol right there. So in terms of S Pen functionality, as powerful as ever, you're not really giving anything up in software here. It's again, just the removable battery and that micro SD card slot that you're going to have to live with that. Otherwise, faster, better quality screen. In fact, Display Made who measures displays and we have great respect for them. They do very good work. I said this is the best smartphone display that they've seen. And it's hard to argue with that. This has like 130% of sRGB for color gamut. It's got complete Adobe RGB coverage. And as usual with Samsung, you can choose your color profiles. If you want something natural and not overly saturated, you can go with the sRGB mode, which is just your 100% color saturation. You can go with the adaptive display, which, it, you know, it gives you the over-the-top colors I think most Samsung folks love. There's a couple of different settings that you can play with to find what you like. It's also the brightest phone yet. I'm aiming it right now at 600 watts of spotlight power. And you can still see this screen just fine. This is the brightest one yet. And I was really impressed when I took this outdoors in the summer Texas sun where my, the last generation note, I just really could not see it. This one, yeah, you can see it outdoors. So it makes using the camera outdoors on a sunny day more pleasant. It makes answering the phone not a case of, gee, I really wish I could see who it said was calling. You can do that here. Performance on the phone is just like the Galaxy S6. No surprise, it's got the same internals, just a little bit more RAM here. And you can see our score for the Ice Storm Unlimited test is a 3D Mark test of 16,571. That's a very, very healthy score. And here's our Geekbench 3 score. As you can see, 1403 single core, 4713 multi core. Again, super fast. On Tutu, 63,086. So, Quadrant, 34,631. It's a fast phone. It's a responsive phone. It's never caused any lag so far. Happy with that. Viewing angles on this display are quite good. You can see I'm playing Asphalt 8 right here at the moment. And again, the fast phone, the big screen, make for a wonderful gaming experience. If you're totally into gaming, you want a faster phone with a bigger screen, you're just going to be very happy with this phone. It's not going to improve your driving skills any, but actually it might a little bit because the frame rates are so good that you're just not going to screw up as much probably because you're getting very good updates on screen.
Does the phone get toasty when gaming? Well, I guess it does. Glass conducts heat fairly well. You're going to feel it warm up over here, uh, particularly if you're charging it while you're playing a game, which I think can be tempting to do because playing a 3D game like Asphalt 8 is something that does drain the battery quickly. That said, 3,000 milliamp battery sealed inside this unit. So far, I'm averaging about four and a half hours of actual screen on time, which was respect is respectable enough and is good enough to get most people through a full day, but not two days on a charge with average use. I mean, if you're playing Asphalt 8 all the time, for example, you're going to have shorter run times. If you're using the GPS a lot, you're going to have shorter run times. But in general, battery life is adequate. And there are a variety of external USB charges that you can use these days to charge up the phone. It also supports quick charge. So... Charging is very fast on this, and it supports wireless charging. No extras needed, just supports wireless charging, cheap wireless charging out of the box. The phone has a fingerprint scanner embedded in the home button, so does the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, but it seems like every new iteration just gets a little bit better. For those of you who are wondering how it compares to the iPhone 6, it works just as well in my test so far. So turn it on and just lay your finger on there. First time I missed because I did that instead of, you know, putting my fingertip on there. So it's up to you to get the location right. And let's try that again. Now, it's not like the iPhone where you press and click to wake it up and automatically scan it at the same time. That's something different right there. So we can do this and lay it on there, but it tends to also think you're pressing the home button sometimes. and You might get the multitasking launcher coming up as a result of that. But overall, it works fine. Now, here is something else that you've got to turn off. You just want to write a quick note to self. Do you want to bother unlocking the phone and hitting the power button? Now, so you take out the pen, and it is ready. You can barely see it. There's little icons for you to write a note. And there it is. You can write to your heart's content. You can delete it and you can save it if you want. There's an eraser tool as well. And no, this will not bypass the lock on the screen. So say I say save. It's going to do that. Notice the screen is still locked. Likewise with launching the camera. You can go ahead, you can take a picture. And when you're done, we'll just take a very boring picture of a table. And even if I go to gallery, it will let me see the picture I just took. And it says, aha, your screen's locked. You can't see the other stuff right here. So yes, the security actually works there. And you do enter a backup password. So just in case something, God forbid, happens to the fingers that you've enrolled, you have a backup password. Do write it down because otherwise you get the hard reset the phone. The phone has the same 16 megapixel rear camera with flash. HDR recording, all the usual bells and whistles, 4K video recording as well as 1080p video recording, and our front 5 megapixel wide angle camera with all the usual available settings. There's lots of settings that you can use here to tweak your photos, adjustments, all that sort of thing. I won't go into that into detail because this is just like the Galaxy S6 cameras and it takes really lovely photos and videos. It has optical image stabilization, which will help if you are jittery, not if your subject is jumping around. That's to stabilize so when your hand's moving like that, nothing happens. Now, I am really impressed with this. And you know, I do camera reviews too and I'm a real camera buff. This is just, it's got a dimensionality. It's just not your usual artificial looking picture. And again, more, the depth in here, the variety of tones, the lack of artificial sharpening is really just good stuff. And it's, I have to say, it's beating the pants off of the iPhone even. Here's a 4K video. Now, it doesn't use the optical image stabilization when it's recording 4K video. There's a still shot that was taken. You can actually shoot photos while you're recording video. That is not a new feature. Now let's look here, because often this kind of thing, you'll see the leaves look pleasantly digitized or unpleasantly digitized. No, they don't. They actually look quite good. You can see the detail in the rocks there, the little solar lamp. The, the water looks fairly realistic there. You can see a little sharpening around the edge of the waterfall, but nothing terrible. Certainly very good by camera phone standards. And how about indoor shots? low light shots. This is in a very dark room, hardly any lighting whatsoever, cloudy day, and there's our kitty cat. And as I zoom in, you can see the kitty cat is not a noisy, blocky mess. He looks pretty darn good. And this did not use the flash either, which the cat appreciated. So superb camera here, really nice. Now, when I first launched S-Note, Samsung's all-purpose note-taking application, I was kind of mortified because 
some of my favorite features were gone. Maybe it's the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. And Samsung thought a lot of people weren't using shape recognition or handwriting to text or formula writing, that sort of thing. So they added it to the more menu, but you won't see that until you actually go to the main S note screen. So if you're in the midst of a note, you won't see this, but when you're on the, the starter page for S note, there it is, more features. And these are free, so you can download these things. So I have downloaded the ones that I needed to get my functionality back. So it's still there, have no fear. So here we are in a note and you can handwrite stuff and then you can select it using the select tool and you can turn it into text, which works remarkably well. By the way, in any application right here, we're going to press on and hold on the microphone button. If you want to use handwriting instead, you can do that. And that actually works pretty well too. In fact, very well. You can write here, does the job. I'm left-handed. I have hideous handwriting. And that's a way to use handwriting anywhere. If you're in Adobe Reader and you want to mark up a PDF, as you can see, absolutely no problem there. You can do highlights, you can do note bubbles like so, you can do circling on stuff. And then Adobe also has this new thing for forms, Adobe Fill and Sign. With either version, you can actually sign if you need to sign a form as well. So the S Pen lives on as a great feature. It's also fantastic for folks who want a pocket sketch pad as ever. Pressure sensitivity, it works very nicely. Palm rejection, rest your hand on the screen, good stuff. Obviously this phone is great for watching video with the big and super vivid display and we'll turn up the speaker. 8.3 pounds or so. But I have to use a laptop cooler with that because speaker. it's very hot on the bottom so it ends up weighing as much as this on my lap because I don't need... Somehow the Note, despite the fact it's a huge phone, has never had a great speaker. This is actually one of the louder speakers that I've heard. Now we have the Verizon version of the phone. That's pretty obvious. Big logo on the back there. Carriers just love to do their branding. And we also have the international model and, and voice quality on, the, on both of these phones has been good, particularly very good for incoming voice, very loud and full. And there's an, even a amp amplification option to make things even louder on the phone. Outgoing voice is good, not super fantastic. I suspect there's more to do with the length of the phone and how far the earpiece mics are from your mouth. Definitely if you move the earpiece away from your ear, it's gonna sound kind of funny. So you wanna keep this centered on your ear. Pricing is going to vary from carrier to carrier. Approximately around $700 for the 32 gig version, around $800 for the 64 gig version. AT&T has the higher price. Verizon has the lowest price. Sprint and T-Mobile are sitting somewhere in the middle. It's priced similarly to the Note 4 when the Note 4 first came out. And these days, most people are on monthly payment plans. So you can find out from your carrier what that's going to cost. So this is going to be a premium phone. It's going to cost a bit more than the Galaxy S6. Now the S6 Edge Plus is even more expensive than this guy. So if you're price sensitive and you know you want a big screen phone, keep that in mind unless you're overly enamored with the rounded corners on the S6 Edge Plus phone. Standard features here, of course, LTE 4G. By the way, Verizon version that we have here does not have that many LTE bands. I know some people are tempted to buy the Verizon version and because it's unlocked and use it on other carriers. Not a lot of LTE bands here, so not really recommended. Has dual band Wi-Fi, and a little to have an AC, Bluetooth, NFC. That works with Samsung Pay, by the way, when that rolls out as well. That's a Samsung's competitor to Apple Pay. And of course, we have a GPS with NFC on board as well. So that's our Note 5. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, available on all major U.S. carriers and, of course, carriers overseas. Your choice of black or white, and the black being that bluish black like we showed you. And overseas, you guys can get the gold. We can't. Well, maybe that'll change. I don't know. Anyway, it's an expensive phone. The Note phones always are. But if you want Samsung's giant high-resolution display, if you like that S Pen feature, and all the, the goodness that's packed inside, really fast performance, good-looking phone here, well, that's the price you're going to have to pay. For those of you who can care less about the pen, there is the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, same big screen, just no pen, and curvy design. We're going to review that one as well. It's nice to have choices. Either way, you're getting a nice phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And by the way, if you like the review but you don't like the phone, remember the thumbs up's for the review, not for the phone. If you didn't like the review, well, that's what that thumbs down's for.